Welcome to East Lake Church. Whether you are here in Chula Vista or you're online, the patio, the real MVPs, PVR, we see you today. Um, my name's Carla. I'm one of our pastors. And as you can see, I have some friends with me, but I'll introduce them in just a few moments. Um, it is an honor to be with you on this Mother's Day, which I believe is potentially one of the most complicated days of the year, okay? For starters, we've got mommy issues, okay? We talk about daddy issues and we try to blame all the emotional damage we have on our dads, but let's be honest, moms can contribute, right? I have met people that I thought, oh, your mama didn't love you enough, huh? And I dated a guy whose mama loved him too much, okay? It wasn't <laughs> cute in the long run. Uh, and then there's just this reality that at some point in our lives, if you're a mom, you realize you may be more like your mom than you once thought. Here's a little throwback to Mrs. Doubtfire uh, to help capture how this truth may be unfolding. As a kid, I thought Sally Field was such a killjoy, Mrs. Doubtfire. Now I'm like, he brought a pony into the house? Ain't that the truth? Watch that as an adult and you're like, oh, that poor lady. I didn't feel that way as a kid though. And then there's just all these expectations, the gifts, the flowers, the outfit, the family photo, all of it. It can just get really complicated. I don't have time to get into it, but Mother's Day 2018 was almost ruined by my expectations. We recovered, but it was bumpy getting there, okay? And then there is just this reality um, that Mother's Day may be tender. Uh, Hallmark likes to make it seem like the best of all days, but what I know personally and what I know from this community is that um, there's a tenderness that comes from this day. Um, for starters, your husband may have forgotten today was Mother's Day, right? Oof. Um, and maybe you're navigating this as a single mom for the first time. Um, maybe you're here and you're grieving infertility and miscarriage. You're in the process of adopting and you're waiting. As a stepmom, this day always has carried some level of complication for me. I love my boy, and this day has a way of making it seem like I'm, my role in his life is less than. Um, as a, a wife, this day has also been complicated when a point in our marriage, I wanted more kids, and my husband did not. Um, it was a complicated season for us. And maybe you're here today and you have kids and what you're walking through is that you're realizing life is not what you thought it would be. Maybe you don't know how to raise these kids that you have. Welcome to the club. Um, maybe you're exhausted. Maybe you're struggling with depression. Maybe there's anxiety. Um, whatever that may be. Uh, the other reality is that maybe today has a way of reminding you of the mom you never had, a mom who did her best but constantly fell short and left you hurt, maybe due to her own upbringing and trauma or maybe even mental illness. Um, and I know that there's some of you here today who at one point have lost your mom and today just has a way of pinging that grief. So however you walk in here today, I want you to know we get it. We understand that there may be tenderness here. We see that, we respect that. And I want you to know that you even showing up shows me your resilience inside. And that the God that I believe in, he is a God of grace and a God of grace who looks to meet us right where we are no matter why we are there. And that he not only looks to meet us with grace where we are, that he looks to empower and equip us to help us move forward well for our sake and for the sake of others. And as moms, and whether you're a mom today or one day will be, and whether you're a mom in a conventional sense or an unconventional sense, whatever that is, I believe that we are uniquely, inherently, and just very strategically placed to impact the world around us at home, in our communities, in our society, and at the world at large. Because who runs this world, right? We covered this, right? <laughs> and so this God who comes to look and empower and equip us, and some of the ways he does this is by giving us guides and examples, and some of those guides and examples we find in the Bible. I think of Mary, the mother of Jesus. When you look at her story, this is a woman who personifies the vulnerability and the power of motherhood. She does it, she holds both. Another famous um, poem found in the Old Testament, the end of the book of Proverbs, which is this book intended to help us to live well. It says this in Proverbs 31, uh, 31 and this is our theme verse today. It says, regarding um, a woman uh, who that the scriptures call as a capable and noble, she's a wife, she's a mother, she's a woman, it says this. She's clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. 
Other translations say that she looks ahead with joy or that she looks ahead with confidence. And I like those words better because all I think about when I read this verse is my school loans that are in deferment and there's no laughter coming out. There's confidence, but I'm not laughing about it. I'm paying, I'm going to pay for said loans. So when she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instructions with kindness. There is confidence, there's power, there's leadership in this woman. This is a woman who's using her voice for good. She is not shrinking back. She's taking up space. She's a woman who knows truth, who lives truth, and in turn embodies wisdom. And sisters, this is in the scriptures, in the Bible, to give us an example of what this can look like and who we can become. Another beautiful way that God equips and empowers us to walk out this life as best as we can is that he gives us the gift of one another. He gives us the gift of community. When you read about what the, what the church is intended to be at its very best, it is intended to be this intergenerational family where we have one another as guides, as models to show us and to help us become our very best selves. And that when we have the opportunity to watch someone else live their life in a wise, meaningful way, that it gives us instructions and it empowers us and equips us to live wise and well in lives, our own lives well. And I know that here at Eastlake, this is one of those realities that not only I've read about in the Bible, but it's been true of my story. Showing up to this place and being engulfed in this family has been such an important, meaningful gift to me. And so this Mother's Day, what we decided to do is that we wanted to give that very gift to you guys. And so we got this group of moms who embody wisdom in their very own unique ways. Each mom is going to share a lesson that they learned along the way or they learned from their mama. And, and we are going to learn some mom lessons today together, whether you're a mom or whether you're not. And so that being said, I'd love for you guys to introduce yourself and to let us know the stage of life you're representing here today. And well, Patrice, we'll start with you. Well, hi, my name is Patrice. Oh yeah, you just said it. Uh, <laughs> I am the mom of two college age boys, which in about five minutes, they're supposed to come home for the summer, so. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeannie. My husband and I have three children, uh, one in middle school and two in high school. And yes, you may pray for us now. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Christine, and I'm married with two kids, ages six and three, one in elementary school and one in about to go to preschool. And I'm also part of two groups here. I'm a part of East Lake Mops and Reengage. I'm so thankful that you guys get to hear from these three moms, but I want to make sure you guys know that we know this doesn't represent the full spectrum of mom life, okay? I wish we could have a single mom up here, a military mom, a mom who's raising a child with a special need. Um, I, I wish we could have a grandma up here. We thought about it, we just couldn't do it all, okay? So I want to make sure you know, we know that every mom counts. And that being said, Christine, why don't you take us into point one of our lessons with mom? So this is your first fill-in in your outline, and it says, if it's worth doing at all, it's worth doing well. So this strikes against half-heartedness, and half-heartedness meaning without enthusiasm. However, this is common in our society, right? To be lazy, the desire to get by with as little as, as possible, sometimes even an unwillingness to commit to anything. So our verse is found in Proverbs 13:4, which says, lazy people want much but get little, but those who work hard will prosper. Um, it, takes a lot of hurt, oh, it takes a lot of hard work to be successful, and you won't get to where you want with uh, doing, um, with, or at least with being lazy. Uh, you have to put the effort and work into, into doing it in order to uh, get the outcome that you want. So I've been pondering on this topic uh, since I received this assignment, and this is something that I, I resonate with the most. I'm one that likes to go big or go home, uh, and if I'm going to put any effort into doing something, it better be worth my time, and especially uh, in the thick of raising two littles at home. So I'm a, like I said earlier, I'm a part of East Lake Mops, and East Lake Mops is a group for moms in, uh, that have kids in sixth grade and younger. And I found MOPS because I was searching for community um, uh, with other moms in the same life stage as me. And in searching, I found my tribe. So MOPS is a place that I like to go to hang out with girlfriends, uh, drink coffee, eat brunch, and uh, talk about life-giving subjects such as parenting, motherhood, self-care, and Jesus. 
I'm an extrovert, and one of my fortes is getting to know people more and learning their stories because guess what? Everyone does have a story. So in the beginning, in the beginning, MOPS was very small, and I knew everyone. And then uh, there came a point where MOPS grew really big, really fast. And what I did was I stepped back and I realized that I could do something here for the better or for the good of others. Uh, referring back to the latter half of your verse, it says, "Those who work hard will prosper." I saw a need for moms to connect outside of MOPS because I too was one of the moms that needed to connect outside of MOPS <laughs> and find my community. So being an extrovert, I invited all of the moms uh, out on a play date uh, at the park. And it was small, it was quaint, it was beautiful, and it was successful. Uh, so from my very first play date to my, um, not my last one, but my most recent one as of last week, um, I was able to create a space where moms could get together and hang out. Um, uh, I, I also create an easy craft for kids, and they all, I also um, have everyone bring snacks, because everyone loves snacks, and if you have toddlers, Hashtag snacks, hashtag do you want a snack, hashtag I'm hungry, I need a snack. Or grown people. <laughs> yes, or grown people and their snacks. So I've, what I've done was I've, I've, I also took a look back and what I've realized, what I've seen was um, friendships develop out of this. I've seen moms show up with their struggles and get the help that they need. I've seen moms leaning in more and leaning into their marriage, to their kids, uh, to themselves, and to Jesus. And I've seen moms who just needed to get a break and just get outside and hang out with their, with their kids and get some fresh air. And I've also seen moms, most importantly, enjoying their kids more. So my desire to put in the work to uh, make these play dates successful came from the Holy Spirit nudging me inside and uh, telling me that for me to just take a leap of faith and invite someone out. My encouragement to you is to listen to the Holy Spirit that lives within you and in your heart and get out there and make something happen. As a mom, this is what's important to me, and I want this to be true to you, to be true to your kids, and to be true of my kids as well. Because if it's worth doing it all, it's worth doing well. Yeah, I'm so thankful for um, Christine and Christina's investment. And here at Eastlake, we are, this community is what it is because of people like Christine who had a need, felt a need, and then walked it out. They felt empowered to do it. We're so thankful for you. And this whole point makes me think of Jeannie. Jeannie is a woman of excellence. When Jeannie says yes, she does not mess around. So Jeannie, I'd love for you to uh, chime in here. Uh, thanks. Well, I love, Christine, how you brought up the issue of half-heartedness and lack of enthusiasm. When I try to live out what I want to teach my kids, you know, in order for me to teach my kids, I, I need to live it out my, myself. And when you decide something, show up, regardless how you feel, just show up. And what show up means, be ready, be willing, be able. And I love how you show up for your MOPS meetings, but you go be above and beyond that. And being a person who's very extroverted and wanting a community and setting, going above and beyond by setting up this community for other women is showing up. And because you're doing that and stepping above the line of, of that, you are allowing God to work in these women too. Yeah. Patrice, what are your thoughts? Chime in. Oh my goodness. Well, the first thought I had was <laughs> snacks. <laughs> I'm a snacker. I don't know about you, but snacks are life. So I, I'll show up to your thing with the snacks. <laughs> um, and I, I love how you, you mentioned intention and that you put in the work in order to make it successful. And I think sometimes uh, we're kind of half-hearted about things. At least I know I am. Sometimes I'm like, eh, I kind of. But you said yes to something and you, put, you did your best work. You're doing your, be your best work every time. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. So much of this um, value to me is also, of uh, this principle is also knowing your values. Mm -hmm. It's figuring out where, who's gonna get my yes, what's gonna get my yes, realizing that means there's gonna be some no's. And then in the middle, there's just some things that need to get done. So I'm gonna power through them and I'm learning to lower my expectations in those areas and realizing average is okay. That may my, my yes go to all my best values. May I get better at saying no in the, I just gotta get it done. Average being just getting it done is enough. Mm -hmm. But from this point, I'd love for us to transition to Jeannie, who's gonna take us to our second mom lesson. Yes, so growing up, my younger brother, he's pretty mischievous, and he would always do something bad to me, and being the big sister, I would repay him back. And my mom would punish the both of us. 
And me being the fairness police, I would say, but he started it, and that's not fair, why am I getting in trouble? And my mom would say in her thick Filipino accent, you think you're better by doing that too? Well, you're wrong. And that's my mom's interpretation of our second lesson in your outline. Two wrongs don't make a right. I had thought of the idea of an eye for an eye to make sense, right? That was just. But Jesus taught the opposite. In 1 Thessalonians 5.15, it says, make sure that nobody pays wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and to everyone else. I have teenagers, Yikes. right? <laughs> and two of them are in high school. This is a fun season, right? All the early uh, lessons that you, you're teaching right now, Christine, has magically molded our kids into these perfect teens, right? Perfect. Right? <laughs> Actually, no, this is the season where it's push and pull, more pushing on my kids' side. And so I have lots of mama stories to share, but this one comes to mind. It was a freshman year of one of my sons, and he was doing great, transitioning into high school. Classes were good, grades were good, making friends, setting a community. And it wasn't until the second semester where I, we noticed there was a shift in his attitude and his grades were starting to slide. He was actually pretty irritable. And one evening, as we're all getting ready for bed, he comes into the room and asks us something odd. Well, a few days ago, he had accidentally been bumped in the nose for roughhousing at school, and he wanted a mask to cover his face. Well, it was late at night, I wasn't gonna get him a mask, and I said the likelihood of ac someone accidentally bumping into your face at school is really low. So he walked away frustrated, but that didn't sit well with me. Call it mom radar, or maybe the Holy Spirit prompting me to move. So I got up, walked to his room, and I asked him what was really going on. And what he had revealed to me was that for the past couple months, he had been bullied at school. And the rage that spat out of his mouth about wanting to hurt this bully personally came out of a place of hatred. I understood his anger because he'd been treated wrongly. I will never downplay bullying Quite frankly, I probably would want to teach him a lesson too. But what concerned me most was what this wrongdoing was doing to him, my son. So, one of my favorite people, Will Smith, no, this is story, all I don't know him personally though, <laughs> says it's spot on. Prince of Bel-Air, <laughs> right? <laughs> I think I aged myself. <laughs> Throughout life, people will make you mad, disrespect you, treat you bad. Let God deal with the things they do because hate in your heart will consume you too. As a parent, it was very painful to see my son functioning out of this place of hate. I knew then what my mom meant by, you think you're better by doing that too. You see, we may see justification, uh, we may see payback as justification, but God sees it as a heart issue. It may have felt good temporarily to hurt the bully, but in the long run, the decisions will shape his heart. It was a matter of his heart. So going back to that long night, we were able to walk him through the right way. We stood by him the next morning at school as he revealed what had been going on to the administration. And it, he later found the courage to forgive his bully. Was it easy? Uh, no, it was not. He really wanted to pay back that bully by hurting him. But it was through this process of recognizing this hate and letting it go had allowed him to clear his heart from this anger that has held him captive. Looking at the verse, there's another translation. It says, always exert kindness. God says always, not on occasion, not when we feel like it. He says, always exert kindness. What that looked like for my son was having boundaries. He forgave his bully, but he didn't have to be his friend. So his decision to forgive and set up boundaries was his exertion of kindness. Sometimes we can mix up kindness with meekness, but that's not true. When we choose to exert kindness like my son did, we are really making the decision to shift our hearts to act out of love and not hate. 
So beautiful, Jeannie, yeah. I love that. Patrice, I, I would love for you to chime yeah. in. I know this is one of those topics. <laughs> you know, don't you just love the mama brave? Like, sometimes you have to just go for it. And I think as I listen, <laughs> suck it up, don't you? Uh, you know, having that hard conversation, you're pushing against discomfort, you're on like, gosh, I got to go into his bedroom and have, I don't even know what's in that bedroom. Um, <laughs> or if I can find him, <laughs> or if I can find him in the bedroom, right? But you push against that. And, you know, you, and I think that's the hard thing to do. And so you, it's, it's hard work, but I love that. I love that brain, you know? An um, uncomfortable conversation at the front is better than an even more uncomfortable conversation later. Write that down. <laughs> That's beautiful. And then Christine, I, um, I know parts of your story and you embody this principle in your own life. Um, would you please add to the conversation here? Yes, thanks. Uh, first off, I want to let you know that I too have a Filipino mom with a <laughs> Filipino <laughs> accent as well too. <laughs> um, so your verse that you had mentioned uh, reminds me of a quote by Dr. Dwayne Dyer and he said, when given the choice between being right and being kind, choose kind. And to talk about forgiveness, I think that you are raising a uh, confident and smart young man um, and uh, also about boundaries and not only with other people, but within himself and his learning what his limits are too. So great yeah, job. that's beautiful. Um, I think I would also add that one of the things I love about this story is um, it, it's about access to your, to your son's heart. Mm -hmm. And no matter how old we are, we all need people who have access to our hearts, people who, have, um, who are close enough and who have been given permission to say, yeah, all that other stuff, true, true, true. But I'm worried, I'm concerned, I want the best for your internal life. And obviously that takes trust and rapport and courage and all that stuff. Um, and by giving it to your son, you're setting him up for a future where he's going to be better positioned as a young man, as a husband one day, as all these other things, to allow people to have access to his heart. And so I love that so much. Um, Patrice, yes. take us to lessons from mom number three. Oh my goodness. I just want to thank you for giving me a break before I have to, after that song. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, so uh, <laughs> this is my uh, sassy mama. Uh, in her four inch heels. <laughs> and she's pictured here with my two older sisters and they're gonna love that I said that. Uh, I, I learned so much from watching this woman of impressive will, um, the importance of making the most of every opportunity. She taught me another great mom lesson that, I, that is our third fill in today and it is strike while the iron is hot. An example of this in scripture comes from the book of Esther. So Esther was a young woman who had become queen, and at the very same time, she discovered there was a plot to wipe out all her people. And to add to the intrigue of the story, it's her husband's trusted confidant who wants to do it. So Esther was then challenged by the man who raised her to act in the most courageous way possible to save her people. So the verse says, if you keep quiet uh, at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. So Esther had a challenge. She had to strike while the iron was the most hot. But having been raised to love God and put her hope and trust in him, she summoned all of that divine courage to have a conversation with the king who was her husband. It's the last sentence of this verse that uh, captures the essence of this fill-in. Because it says, who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. Uh, so... Isn't that the way it feels when you have to take a risk? Who knows what's going to happen, right? It can feel so scary and overwhelming. And, uh, and it's the fear of the unknown. Maybe it could be just the right move, or maybe it could not. Esther didn't know how the conversation was going to play out. 
She could lose everything. She could lose her life. But as we read in the story, we see her move with intention and strategy before she had the conversation with the king, her boo. Uh, (laughs) See, striking while the iron is hot doesn't always guarantee great results or, you know, that it all will be well. That's the scary part. But one thing my mama taught me um, while, is that while there are no guarantees in this life, she taught me that I have a faithful God who is for us and with us. And I can hold on to that. I can jump in and I can make waves. And who knows, right? But God is with us, so we hold on to that. I think back to my own such a time as this moment when my parents um, make, were making plans to leave uh, Jamaica to move to the U.S. It was strategic and well-planned, and they strongly felt that this was the time. This was the moment when they would move to their next. And it was a long and challenging you know, process. But my parents, they had to do the work. Uh, so during that time, my mom... Uh, being an overachiever, I also decided to strike while the iron is hot. Pile on. She would make the most of every opportunity and also apply the university as well. Mom knew that if she didn't make that life pivot at just that right time, she may miss the opportunity. And the most courageous steps change the direction for our family. I've been blessed, so blessed to watch her make many pivots and turns and detours and decisions on behalf of our family. And that's what I want to teach my sons. I also want to continue to lead by example. Uh, I want to encourage them to flex their brave, to make the most of every God opportunity, and most of all, be courageous. I think of Eugenie how you had to flex your brave that day by walking to your teenager's bedroom, God knows what will happen there, to have that conversation. Christine, you flex your brave every time you show up at a play date with snacks, yes, (laughs) with intention and with your extrovertedness and you're creating community and space. Life, Life here, when we moved here to the States, was so challenging, but my parents never let the immediate situation determine the final outcome. So what are the God opportunities you're reluctant to pursue? Is there a season of detour or change? Sometimes the hard work simply means being in a ready stance for your next. It could literally change everything. Oh, Patrice, so good. (laughs) Jeannie, what resonated with you there? I love the story of how your mom really was working towards coming and immigrating over here into the United States. It reminds me of my own parents. My parents immigrated here as well. They were the pioneers for our family that really kind of paved the way for future generations. They were the chain breakers. They left something comfortable to come to a foreign country that they knew nothing about but only had hope. And having that courage, and if if you don't have parents that have immigrated here, it's just being in that spot of making that decision. Are you comfortable and is God calling you to have that divine courage to step out? So I love that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Christine, what do you think? Um, So yes, Patrice, I like what you said about um, don't be afraid to do the hard work. And I see a lot of parallels between your story and my story with your mom doing her hard work um, to come to the United States. But beforehand, God already had that plan laid out for her. And also with God working, doing his work um, with moms and building community well before I even started the play dates. Uh, So, (laughs) and snacks. Uh, Yes. So God laid out his plans uh, well before we make ours. Yeah, that's beautiful. I think one of the things I love about Patrice's story so much is that these are lessons her mom showed her by the way she lived her life. Um, You mentioned the same thing, Jeannie. It was the, my mom did this, now I'm doing this, and I want to teach my kids this. And in turn, we're talking about a grandma who changed the trajectory and impacted the future of her family because the life she lived, which is going back to our theme verse, which is Proverbs 31. It's the, this is intended to be something, not that we lecture, but something that we are. It's, it's teaching with our life, with our everyday life. And I think that's important for us to understand. And jumping back to what Christine beautifully said here, it's, um, Moms are so good at getting everything done, but us needing to remember that this is intended and designed to be a partnership, a partnership that is initiated by God, that we are invited into something that God is already doing. And and we can't get that order wrong. 
Uh, that at the end of the day, God is leading this thing, that his grace, whether we believe in him or not, that his grace is constantly there saying, here's your next right step. Here's the boy to do this better. This is my, my holy invitation just for you in light of who you are. And that as people, men or women, that all of us are invited to live these lives um, receptive and open to that grace, looking to respond to that grace that meets us right where we are in our unique seasons and our unique life. And this is true as moms, whether we're killing it or whether we're really struggling in our particular season. And I'm not talking about lame mom guilt, okay? I'm not talking about mom guilt. I'm talking about seasons of motherhood where sometimes you realize you're falling short in areas that matter a whole lot where you are able to look and say, my life and my values aren't aligning. And if you're in one of those seasons, first, kudos to you for acknowledging it, okay? And second, don't give up. Do the hard work of leaning in and, and getting yourself on a new course. There is hope, there's always hope. That's one of the beautiful things about the Holy Spirit, about God's grace in our lives. And if you're stuck, get help, get the resources, figure out how to get unstuck. The God that we believe in doesn't leave us stuck. He's a God who constantly is working to help us move forward. Um, one of the unique things about my story, about my life, is that um, I got to watch my mom embody this idea of grace so beautifully. As a young kid, I saw some things thrown at my mom um, that in turn caused her life to just come crumbling. Um, we're talking about depression, we're talking about a divorce she didn't want, and even the death of a child. And this was like boom, boom, boom. And there was more in that season. And what I, obviously the consequences of that were devastating to all of us. But what I got to watch my mom do is I got to watch her rebuild her life and say yes to grace and to do things differently. And eventually, as a late teen, as a young adult, my mom came to me and she took the time and was courageous enough to come to me and say, and to acknowledge my pain, to acknowledge the ways that she contributed to my pain, um, to acknowledge the ways that she wishes she could have done things differently, knowing what she knew now. And then she demonstrated changed behavior. The gift of that was so meaningful. And while there are things in my childhood I most certainly wish were different, and most certainly I can look at and say that was a fail. I'm so thankful as an adult and so honored to have the mom that I have, this woman who taught me lessons of reconciliation, of transformation, of humility, of forgiveness, of asking for apologies. My mom taught me lessons of compassion because of the way that I watched her rebuild and because of the way she let me into that process in an age-appropriate way at an age-appropriate time. And in so many levels, this is our encouragement to you. It's wherever you are today, may you be open to saying yes to the ways in which the Holy Spirit is looking to lead you to your next right step. What is your next step of application based on even just what you heard here today? Like Jeannie like hinted and talked about, is there something in your heart you need to do the hard work of working out? Like Patrice talked about, are there opportunities in front of you that you just need to jump into and say yes to, even though you don't know the outcome, but because they are the thing that God is calling you to do? Like Christine beautifully said, are there areas of your life where you're acting half-heartedly? And so do you need to step back and realize, I need to stop doing that thing or I need to start doing that thing like I mean it, with some deep level of intention. And if you're stuck again, what are those ways to get unstuck? What is it that God is leading you into? As we head towards our close here and as you consider your next right step, um, I'm going to pray a prayer over the moms and the women in this room from author Sarah Bessie. I'm going to be taking experts from a prayer and praying them over us. On Friday at our moms group, like Christine talked about, we had, um, we had a guest speaker, a mom from our community come and she talked to us about lots of beautiful things and she ended her time by praying sections of this prayer over all the women in that room and it was so beautiful that I wanted us to end our time here today using that same thing. So um, here's my ask, okay? If you're comfortable doing this, great. If not, don't worry. 
If you came with a woman, if you came with a mom, again, even if she's not a mom yet, that's okay, or never wants to be mom, all that, still, okay? We come in unconventional ways, our influence. Uh, will you grab her hand, grab her shoulder, touch her in a way that doesn't make her mad or stress her out? Um, if, you came, um, if you came with a woman, around, if you didn't come with a woman and you see one around you, will you extend an arm towards her? Don't make it weird and touch a woman you don't know in a way she doesn't want. <laughs> I will fight you outside, okay? I'm a protect. We will fight you outside. And then we'll deal with our heart later, okay? Sometimes you just gotta get things done. You gotta strike while the iron's hot. Um, but I would love for us to pray this prayer for us um, and pray this over you guys as we head on out here. Okay, so here is this prayer. I pray that love will rise in you and through you. May you turn to Jesus as your teacher and your shepherd. I pray for you to have a finely tuned ear for the voice of the Holy Spirit. So when that you walk, you would hear that voice whispering, this is the way, walk in it. I pray that you remember the truth of who you are, that you would know you are valuable, you are loved, you are worthy, simply because you, sister, you were made in the image of God. I pray that the right woman would come into your life at the right time. Women who know what it is to love and to champion and to celebrate. Women who invite you to go deeper. I pray that you would run the race that is set before you, that you would flourish in your lane while cheering on every other runner alongside of you. I pray that the places where this world has broken you, where evil has left its mark, where you have felt abandoned and broken and hurt, where you are in pain would become a wellspring of healing and wholeness for you. May you live out the ways of Jesus into every corner of your life, always with an eye on who is alongside of you, ahead of you, and coming up behind you. You are set apart in your right now life for the daily work of love. We're in it together. May your life rise. Amen. Amen. Hey, will you guys give it up?